I think it is finally time for us to sit down and talk about the reality and the truth behind bug bounties. As we speak today, these bug bounty platforms claim to have over millions of users and honestly with someone that's been in bug bounties for the last 10 years, both as someone that worked on the platforms and also worked as a bug bounty hunter, I can see this space becoming very very saturated but honestly i still think with how saturated it is there is still opportunities and a chance for everybody that wants to get involved and make some sort of a career or make some money from just doing bug bounties these opportunities come with a bit of a cost and a lot of your time investment because it is going to take a lot of consistency in order for you to become good and this consistency could be with your learning could be with your hacking and just developing the methodology that you have as a bug bounty hunter and what i'm trying to say here is that this is not going to be an overnight success and i feel like a lot of people that come into bug bounties they want to do it for a quick buck and they think by doing the most basic amount of work or just getting comfortable and putting in the minimum effort they are going to become a top hacker or make a ton of money because some of these hackers on twitter or on social media maybe including myself have shared their bug bounty amounts and have set up some expectation that it is that simple and that easy to make some money from bug bounties okay but before we jump into the video do me a favor would it help if i actually create a video about kind of my origin story of how i got here and why i started this youtube channel if it does drop me a comment at just this story or tell us more and i'll make that in a couple of weeks and post it on this youtube channel now let's talk about an example of some of these up-and-coming hackers maybe someone like tess or nagli are a prime example because not only i consider them the newer generation of the hackers not because they are younger or because of an age thing but because they started way later in my career and if you look at both of their pages they have started in 2019 so it's about five years ago when they first started in bug bounties and if you take that apart and kind of understand it it looks like the first couple of years it's just spend looking for vulnerabilities understanding your skills learning more and more and that comes with any other industry that you go to your first few years or at least your first two years are going to be spent in that case and then if you look at it later around 2021 for nagley or 2022 is when he got to the peak of his career and now he's considered a million dollar hacker and one of the people that's been dominating hacker one's leaderboard consistently and if you want to compare this to other industries gaming and streaming are a good way to actually compare these two because in the peak of the pandemic everybody wanted to become a gamer and a streamer and don't get me wrong a lot of them made it but bug bounties is no different to that people will have to put in the time they are streaming eight nine ten hours a day and they continued it after the pandemic and some of them have become some of the biggest streamers out there and if you want to even compare them to some of the biggest streamers you can think about people like dr disrespect or shroud there they took them years and even though you may have heard of these people in the last couple of years they have been streaming for multiple years with zero viewers until they have gone to the place that they are today that doesn't mean that everybody wants to become shroud or dr disrespect or even with bug bounties that doesn't mean that they want to become the next nagli or test you may not have the same goals maybe your goals aren't to become the next million dollar hacker and you may want to just do this throughout college because you want to make some extra money build your career or build your experience so you can put it on a resume and get a job you can do both of those but honestly not everybody's goal should be to become that and it's not for me to discourage you to say hey you shouldn't do this that shouldn't be your goal but honestly i just want to give you the reality of it that not everyone is going to make it to that level but again there is opportunities for everybody it just takes a lot of consistency now let's talk about the, the truth of actually doing the bug hunting and not just the monetary aspects of bug bounties honestly if you're new and you're looking for low hanging fruit and low easy bugs to find well guess what you are going to do nothing but dupes or informatives again the first and most important thing that i teach all of my students during our courses or trainings or one-on-one -on -one sessions is that if you can't answer the question of so what so what can i do with this vulnerability to affect a customer's infrastructure and you probably shouldn't report it because you have something in theory but bug bounties in reality is based on impact if you find something that has impact there is still a high chance of you getting a duplicate especially with public programs or private programs that have been there for a while because let's be honest some of these programs take forever to patch something and you're going to get discouraged based on getting these duplicates or invalid submissions even to this day for somebody as me that's been doing bug bounties for years i still deal with getting 
duplicates or even sometimes in formatters because the client or the customer or the company that I'm hacking on doesn't look at the vulnerability that I have found the same way as I do. So in my head, even though something looks like a vulnerability to them, it doesn't look like it is something that could affect them or it's a functionality. And a lot of times it could be that I'm wrong or even in the small chances they are wrong, the entire argument isn't worth it. And I just rather choose to move on than keep on going back and forth. Why am I making this video? Why is somebody that's been making content full time on bug bounties coming on here on camera and talking about the truth behind bug bounties and how it isn't as easy as it makes it seem on my channel or on Twitter based on other hackers activities. Well, there are a couple of things. One is that I don't want the highlight reel or the fact that I'm getting all these large bounties paid to me or my account to make you think it is easy. Honestly, nothing in life or anything you do as a career is going to come easy with an overnight success. I had a chat with someone that I'm gonna keep him anonymous, but he kind of mentioned to me that, hey, with your videos, you don't show the dark side of bug bounties, which I don't agree that it's dark, but I see the point of the darkness of bug bounties that people don't get paid and people aren't getting paid on time maybe, or even bugs aren't getting validated to the hacker's expectation. And my channel and some of my activity kind of deceives people of that. Well, honestly, I'm not here to say bug bounties are easy for everybody. If you see me having a good time and not really complaining or saying anything negative about bug bounties on my channel or on my social media, it's because I am sharing my personal experience that got me to this point. I'm just showing you the highlights of my career to not only inspire you, but also teach you some of the things that I learned by hacking into these companies. So maybe you can also leverage them and use them to your benefit to find a vulnerability as well. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not having the same experience as you. It just means that in the last 10 years, I've finally figured out what my hacking style is, what is it that it makes me unique, but also how do I communicate better with these companies in order to avoid some of these issues. And that doesn't mean that I don't deal with these issues. I'm still going in and out of these inboxes, whether it's with a triage that I have to go back and forth to explain my vulnerability for them to understand and triage it, or to go back and forth for days or even weeks sometimes to make sure that the company understands the impact of my vulnerability in order for me to get paid. For me, it's an investment. It's a part of the job. For a lot of the people that are doing these bug bounty things for a hobby, for just for fun to make extra money, it's just a hassle and it's not worth the time. But to me, to get my vulnerability bumped from three thousand to maybe five or six thousand dollars, it is worth the back and forth, and it's just a part of the job that I've accepted because. I enjoy what I'm doing with bug bounties and it just makes it more fun or at least it makes up for it when I have to go through these patterns. As far as finding vulnerabilities and hacking regularly, I'm not someone that considers themselves full time. If you look at my videos, I say that I'm a part time bug bounty hunter, but most of my income comes from bug bounties, even though I do it part time. And to actually accept that I go through these phases where I don't find vulnerabilities and honestly, this month alone, April and March combined, I've had a really, really rough time with finding vulnerabilities, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to quit. I've just came to understand that in the last 10 years of doing this, these times happen. You have these really, really high highs where you make a lot of money or you get, you're very successful, you're hitting your goals, you're getting these bounties and finding vulnerabilities. But I know that that comes with a cost of having some lower lows where I don't find any vulnerabilities and I'm just kind of sitting here going, maybe it is time for a new career. I don't make videos from those because it isn't as entertaining or fun for people to watch. And I want to show and encourage people to do better instead of coming on here complaining about my life or complaining about bug bounties and just giving you a negative experience based on that. So if you're seeing the success of this channel and you're kind of seeing my experience, remember that I'm sharing my experience with you and it's just to encourage you to also do this if you have a passion for it. And last but not least, the biggest thing that I want to talk about is the passion side of bug bounties and hacking. When I started getting into bug bounties, again, I want to make this video for you. If you want to see, hear my whole story, drop me a comment saying story. But my reason that I got into bug bounties wasn't fully to get, you know, just paid from it. It is the passion that I had for hacking. And it's not here to say that, hey, you can't make a career out of this by just being consistent and putting in extra hours and working. You can, but if you're not passionate about what you do and you don't like what you do, let's be honest, these little things that are duplicates or the arguments, quote unquote, or the back and forth with program and chargers 
aren't going to be as fun because you're just having a job versus something that you're passionate about and you have fun with. If you're watching this and still asking the question of whether or not bug bounties are worth it, I personally think yes, and even though the number of hackers are increasing every day, I think the number of companies that are opened up to work with hackers are also increasing, and you can see every day there are new programs and companies that are launching a bug bounty program. And last but not least, a word of wisdom. If you want to get into bug bounties, you don't have to copy everything that everybody else is doing. Watch their content, read their blog posts, implement those knowledgeable ideas and the things that they're doing into your methodology, but don't get lost into someone else's methodology. Be unique, learn what works with you, learn what vulnerabilities are interesting to you, look at how everybody else is approaching it. But the most creative hackers that I have met are not only creative and unique in their hacking styles and how they approach a target and how they look for vulnerabilities, but they are also the most passionate hackers, not only about security and hacking, but they just enjoy the knack of breaking into companies and finding vulnerabilities. And they do it with a passion with money being the secondary part of it. And it's just a perk of doing bug bounties and hacking into these companies. All right, I really hope this video kind of clears the air and gives you an idea about bug bounties and kind of brings the reality of bug bounties into my channel. Hopefully I get to have more of these candid and raw conversations with you in the near future. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and come hang out with us on Discord. Peace.